Hello, I am Ann Hoskins, Calf Specialist with VitaPlus. In this series of videos, we will focus on nutrition, systems, calibration, cleanliness, and data management in auto feeding systems. In the past video, we covered nutrition and calibration. Now we will shift our focus to cleaning and maintenance. The key to healthy calves is no different with an auto feeder than it is in a conventional system. Clean, clean, clean. The big difference in an auto feeder is there's a lot of additional pieces and parts. Let's begin with daily cleaning and maintenance. The area that sees the most activity is the nipple. Most farms I work with change nipples at least once a day and in some cases twice a day. Operations will have multiple nipples to allow for proper cleaning between uses. All surfaces around the nipple that can be touched by a calf's mouth should be cleaned at least daily using proper cleaning techniques. The mixing bowl is also a high activity area. Most machines will automatically shut down multiple times throughout the day to self-clean. During this process, the mixing bowl and all hoses except the hose leading to the nipple are cleaned. If you happen to be in the area when this takes place, run a brush around the mixing bowl to remove any extra powder and buildup. Also clean any extra powder around the discharge area. These areas have a lot of moisture, making it easy for the powder to build up at the discharge and create an inconsistent mix of powder and water. The circuit clean is a complete system clean, similar to what you see in your milking parlors. Some farms will run a circuit clean daily, but that can vary from daily to three times per week on average. Circuit cleaning is a manual process and should not be forgotten. You must disconnect the feeding hose connected to the nipple, clean, and then reconnect it to the machine. Auto feeders have many moving and small parts where bacteria can hide. That makes proactive quality control very important. Taking bacteria samples at various points throughout the system will help you identify hot spots. Weekly sampling is ideal, with monthly sampling as a bare minimum. You can also work with your veterinarian, calf specialist, or others trained to do sanitation audits. When conducting a sanitation audit, they will swab key areas of concern. Those areas may include the mixing bowl, milk replacer hopper, hoses at various points, the nipples, the area surrounding the nipple, and many others. Let's move on to hoses. This is a great debate on farm. How often should you replace those hoses? The best answer is, it depends. It depends how often you run a system wash and circuit clean, what detergent you use, and whether systems are running to par. Most farms I see change hoses in the range of weekly to quarterly. If you see buildup in the hoses, you've waited too long to replace them. If a check of bacteria levels or sanitation audit reveals hotspots in the hoses, it's time for new ones. It is also important to work with your equipment dealer to make sure you're using the right chemical and cleaning solutions. These machines do not reach the same temperatures as we are accustomed to with our milking parlors. Most systems are matched with a reduced temperature detergent. Monitoring use of chemicals to make sure they are applied at a consistent rate. Calibrating the chemicals should be on your weekly checklist. Finally, develop cleaning and maintenance protocols to keep everyone on target. Protocols should include daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly checklists. But remember, a checklist is only as good as those using it. Make sure your whole team is committed to the task. Stay tuned for a future video on troubleshooting auto feeder challenges.